This is Mish Control Houston, again, uh, joining us by uh, telephone today. We have a special guest uh, interview with uh, W. Judd Reedy, who is from the Georgia Institute of Technology, and he's uh, just gotten the uh, happy news that uh, his experiment uh, that is going to be looking at uh, how to improve uh, the manufacture of uh, photovoltaic voltaic cells uh, on the International Space Station uh, is actually going to fly to the space station. Welcome, Dr. Reedy. Thank you, Kelly. It's uh, it is a, a very exciting. It's a boyhood dream come true to to fly in space. Even if I'm not actually doing it, something that we handle is is going to do it. So that's uh, it's very exciting. Well, welcome to Mission Control. Tell us a little bit more about your experiment. Well, what our experiment does is use a uh, light trapping morphology on the solar cell. It's a three dimensional solar cell, so that it captures light from multiple angles, uh, which is particularly relevant on the space station because it goes around. Um, so many times, the Earth so many times, um, and you've got mechanical tracking arrays on it to keep the, the, the solar flux uh, powering the, the, ch the channels. And we're looking at some pictures that you sent us. Uh, these look like tiny cubes. Uh, yes, we've got, um, they're actually, if you zoom right in, the carbon nanotubes are very um, vine-like. Uh, and so we try to coat those with our photoabsorber materials. Um, we've done it in the past using cadmium telluride as the the photon absorbing material. Um, this proposal is using a, a new chemistry, new photochemistry known as CZTS, copper zinc tin sulfide. Okay. And so uh, you mentioned that, that they're three-dimensional. Uh, I'm guessing that the uh, cells we're using in most applications here on the ground and in space right now are, are two-dimensional type cells. That's correct. Um, they're they're planar. There was before we developed this technology back in the early 2000s. There was no way to texture what are known as thin film um, photovoltaic cells. You they could texture silicon cells by etching little pyramids into the um, silicon structure itself, um, and that would provide a light trapping. Basically, what it does is it allows the photon of light to hit the solar cell, and if it does not get absorbed, it'll reflect off and hit the solar cell again inside this pyramidal pit. Well, we do the same thing, but we create vertical structures um, that we then coat with, with our photoabsorbers, such as CADTEL, SIGs, CZTS, all the various different thin film um, absorbers. Okay. And you mentioned that this has potential uh, applications in space because, naturally, you've got a, a more three-dimensional uh, capability to collect the sunlight uh, uh, in space as the space station orbits the Earth and the solar rays can track the sun. Uh, what about on Earth? Is this technology uh, of potential use for us here on the ground? Certainly. It would be uh, very useful on the ground. Uh, the key benefit from the CZTS absorber is its low, low cost. Um, the 3D um, Morphology allows us to capture light without having tracking arrays. Usually we don't have tracking arrays on a terrestrial em emplacement of a solar cell. Um, usually you just sort of optimize that on the roof at a, at a given angle that's as close as perfect as you can get, which is not very close at all, um, for your latitude and, and, and where you are on the face of the Earth. With the 3D solar cell, um, well, excuse me, with the planar solar cell, they perform best at high noon. Um, where the incident flux is as perpendicular to the cell as possible. With ours, actually, uh, we want to be off angle slightly um, to allow for more photon impingements on within the, the various different towers that uh, were showed earlier uh, with the various slides. Okay. Would this allow you to, to get collect more electricity with a smaller cell set of cells? Yes. Uh, it's really the, about the integrated energy from sunrise to sunset that we're able to capture because ours will go up, whereas a planar cell will always go down. Um, so that across the entire span of the sun rising to sun setting, we absorb more, more photons due to the light trapping. Okay. We're also able to extract them better because our thin film absorber is significantly thinner because we're assured of the absorption. Um, so the carrier path length, getting the electrons out of the structure to create useful electricity um, is much shorter, so there's a higher probability that they'll come out. All right. And uh, have you heard any indications yet on when your uh, experiment's going to fly? Um, it's a 12-month program, so it'll start in terms of making these things. Um, so that'll start, my guess, probably May 1st, um, middle of April, perhaps, if we're lucky. Um, and then once we deliver it after 12 months, There'll be the integration that CASIS will perform. Uh, I believe it's going up on a Dragon vehicle that you've been showing. It's a beautiful vehicle, so I look forward to riding on that. And um, 
I have no idea how long it'll take from when I get it in Case's hands to uh, go to launch, but I guarantee you I'll be at the launch site watching it and cheering for it. Okay. Uh, you know, you mentioned that this was kind of a dream come true. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where, did, where were you born? Where did you grow up? And how did you get into space research? Um, I am born in North Carolina, Winston-Salem, but grew up in Chapel Hill. Um, so go Tar Heels. Um, we've got uh, – space has always been a boyhood dream. I've applied for the astronaut program since 99. Um, but uh, it was beginning to look like I'm probably not going to be able to fly in space myself. Um, so if I can at least have some of my research up there, that's a pretty good second prize. Um, but maybe by getting some experience here integrating this payload, that maybe it'll up my chances a little bit farther um, in the selection process. I got pretty far a couple, couple selections ago, got to the reference stage, but uh, – never an interview. All right. Well, and so it's interesting that this, a lot of people don't know about CASIS, and so uh, uh, we're talking about this because this is one way, one avenue for researchers, whether they're from an academic institution or for a commercial company or even individuals in some cases, to get research on the International Space Station. It is a U.S. official national laboratory, uh, and so uh, can you tell us a little bit about how working with CASIS has been? Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, it's it's just like, you know, working going to be just like if I went to Oak Ridge National Lab to do do my research up there. Um Battelle runs that for for the US government. Cases does the exact same thing for the International Space Station essentially. Um so it's been fun. I'm just learning to meet all the people down there. Um so I plan actually uh, I'm going to be there in 2 weeks for uh, spring break and just happen to be down there with uh, my daughter so maybe we'll zip over to the to the cape to to see them and see the place all right. Well, Jed Reedy, thank you so much for joining us today, and congratulations on your experiment being selected for uh, tests on the International Space Station. We'll uh, look forward to hearing the results of your research. Thank you very much, Kelly. I appreciate it. All right, that was uh, Judd Reedy, uh, who is uh, working with an experiment that's been selected now by the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space uh, to fly on the International Space Station uh, in a year or so that's going to look at how to make uh, a better and three-dimensional uh, solar cells that can generate electricity from sunlight.